Welcome back to my ongoing series on patching the polycrawl. We've strayed pretty far from what an original crawl patch looks like as originally designed by Todd Barton in that now we're using some of the Krell envelopes to generate envelope shapes controlling voices that are deriving their pitches from other places and in a couple of cases even paraphonic parts that we've created to add some polyphony. Previously we looked at how I've created a counterpart voice by grabbing pitches coming out of the sample and hold that's sampling our original quantizer and then using different logic and di different um, gates and triggers to choose different parts of that note stream for our counterpart voice so that it can be doing something that although is similar to what the original melody part is doing it's a little bit different and then uh, now I just wanted to go over quickly how it is that I've created this kind of unique sounding voice so what I'm doing is I'm taking the envelope pitch that comes or rather I'm taking the envelope CV that comes out of math channel 1 for our counterpart voice and I'm shooting it over to a Z3000 tip top oscillator and it's hard to see the frequency numbers on here but if you look at them they just sort of jump up and then they jump down I'm coming out of that oscillator out of its pulse output and I'm running a pulse wave over into elements and I'm running into elements extension input so we're not really hearing the Z3000 what it's doing is I'm using its sweeping pulse oscillations as the exciter for elements and we'll take a look at what elements is doing So here's Elements, which I've set up to be the sound producer for our counterpart voice. And here is where I'm coming in. I've attenuated the signal slightly off camera, but I'm coming into Elements with that sweeping pulse oscillation from the Z3000. And then by keeping the damping control fairly high elements will resonate at the frequency set by its own oscillation but excited by what's coming from the Z3000 and if I turn our damping off completely we might hear the Z3000 the Z3000 tracks the pitches that I'm also sending to elements which is the pitches we're hearing in our counterpart oscillator but it sweeps up above those pitches and it does so to give us harmonics it sweeps through a whole harmonic series and then again I've got some CV coming in on the bottom of elements so I'm controlling the damping the position and the brightness with the CV so here I'm using CV to sweep the position and here I'm using CV to open up our brightness so if I manually open up brightness hear that Z3000 in the background there's a little bit of vibrato that you'll hear as well
and that is coming into our FM input, and that's exactly the same vibrato that I originally created for the melody voice. And it is coming from one of the envelopes from the double end Dore. And that LFO from the Hertz Donut is the, is the same sine wave that I'm using to create vibrato for the melody part. Now, if you remember back to our earliest videos in this series, I'm using an inverted envelope, the Krell envelope from the melody voice, to back off on the vibrato whenever that melody Krell envelope goes high. And I'm using that ex exact same output so that I'm modulating the amount of vibrato coming into the counterpart voice. The difference is that the Krell envelope for the counterpart voice is its own completely different on envelope. So a lot of the time, the counterpart voice envelope is open when the envelope for the melody is closing. So then we hear the vibrato coming in to the counterpart voice almost at different times. But every once in a while, they'll line up. We'll hear the melody and the counterpart voice, and those two vibrato parts will line up. And I'll flick on the melody. Maybe we can hear it. and my quantizers and my sample and holds so that I could bust them around the system and use them in other places. And I did this from the earliest beginnings of the patch. And typically whenever I'm creating a patch like this, when I first start, I'm really aware of where I'm headed in the future. I've got a pretty good outline in terms of where I might want voltages. So as I patch my way through the system, I'm careful to leave little places where I can pull voltages out. And I tend to have a lot of malts all over my system specifically for that purpose. But I also like to leave places where I can send voltages into so that I can make changes to the patch as it runs. And we'll explore some of that in future videos when we look at now taking this whole entire patch, this whole polycrawl, and starting to control the whole thing in a macro kind of way so that we can start to develop some form around it. And I really believe that this is the strength of this kind of patching, is this is how we go from something that is going to really sound samey over, say, five minutes to something that can be really interesting and can be extruded and be changing over time so that we're making these transformations to create a kind of a structure or a form out of the piece. And there are places in this particular patch where I've left some of those openings. So early on in the patch, in the melody voice, when I set up that voice, I very purposefully used a VCA to control the amount of gain going into my Polaris low-pass filter before hitting the Intelligel UMOD quantizer. And I did that so that I can then put a voltage in there in the future and have some voltage control over what that voice sounds like and how bright and harsh I can make it. 
Um, I've also left a little opening in terms of the range of the original quantized waveform, the triangle wave that's coming out of the double Andorre. So I can always go back and not only change the width of the quantized notes that are coming out of my U scale, but I can also move that whole range up and down. I can send an incoming voltage either a slowly changing voltage or a sequence, uh, stepped voltage or random voltages, and then be moving the entire melodic background material that drives the whole melodic content of the patch up and down throughout a different range. And of course, it's no small accident that I chose the IntelliGel U-Scale, which has quite a powerful um, user scale function that lets you create your own user scales and save them, but also a voltage controllable scale function that lets you create up to a bank of eight user scales and then step through them with incoming CV. So it makes perfect sense that I'll create some scales that I want to hear out of the piece and then step my way through them as part of our form. And then this is how I can create different movements that would have a different timbral characteristic, um, a different rate and speed, as well as different ranges coming out of the uh, pitches. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our look at the polycrawl so far please like and subscribe it helps me get more viewers for my videos and please consider joining my patreon to help me make more videos in the future if you've been following the thread on mod wiggler um, please post your krell patches uh, post up some videos or some audio and we'll take a look thank you so much and i'll see you next time around